Hello. In this clip from our Justia webinar, Thriving at the Crossroads of Law and Business in the AI Era, Tom Schack will guide us through ethics in the legal and business industries and how they differ between themselves. If you want to see more Justia videos on law practice and legal marketing, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We are now going to talk about, and this is where we get to the crossroads of business and um, legal ethics. Uh, so business ethics are very vague, right? An individual is a member of a community, uh, has a broader range of issues from top-down principles. So if, um, if for instance, you're in a, um, a public company and, um, you know, and the ethics of the company, uh, typically will flow from the top to down, meaning, you know, whatever the ethical standards that are utilized by the senior, you know, by the, by the C-suite of the senior office, uh, holders, that will, you know, that will, uh, trickle down and it all depends on the kind of industry that you're in. Um, but keep this in mind, if you're a lawyer in any, you know, in any business where, you know, where, um, there's even, you know, a, a slight possibility that you're going to, um, cross over an ethical boundary. Um, be very, very cautious. And also, it's always better to just be clear. Just be clear and straightforward with the people that you're working with. Um, I can't do that. I can't do this. You know, I mean, nothing wrong with saying that, that you can't do something um, in, in particular, uh, because you can always be helpful in other ways. So professional ethics, on the other hand, as opposed to business ethics, are specific moral expectations uh, to the prof specific to the, to the particular group. And these are, you know, these are bottom up cases. So what does that mean versus the top down principles of business ethics? It means that our ethics are, you know, are pretty much made um, from a reactive standpoint, not a proactive standpoint, meaning, you know, for the most part, somebody didn't just, you know, wake up one morning and say, hey, I'm going to write, you know, I, I, the ABA model rules and, you know, and write, write rules for, for lawyers. Um, you know, it, it usually this type of thing happens and rules become rules as a result of some behavior or something wrong that's happened within the community. So it's reactive. So it's not anticipating typically what is going to um, go wrong. It is uh, expressing what is going wrong um, uh, um, specifically. So uh, keep in mind. So what, as those cases, as those cases come up where there's, you know, Maybe a defalcation, um, or you know, where, which is a theft of of client funds. Um, if there's some form of you know, if, if something like that happens, right? I mean, ethically, you're toast. And the reason is, is because the 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 legal organizations across the country that are our professional overseers um, have already dealt, dealt with those cases. They you know, they were brought to their attention, and then they came up with rules to to address them. Um, but it's also important to understand that um, you are not going to be in a position uh, necessarily to be able to, you know, to connect those those ethical issues. Um, but just keep in mind that you know, you know, disclosure and you know, and there are times when you know when you may have to leave a room or you know you can't participate in a particular conversation, um, and it may not be that it's particularly nefarious, but it might just be something that doesn't you know jive with our ethical requirements. So, uh, one of the examples that I use in my classes relative to this is the example of um, of Gillette World Headquarters, which is of course here in Boston, um, and it is a you know a very prominent um, uh, business resident, corporate resident of of um, Boston and Massachusetts. So Gillette World Headquarters, and let's say for the sake of argument that um, that um, I'm the general counsel. Let's say you you are the general counsel of a startup um, from Cambridge, Massachusetts, you know, which is where Harvard and MIT are. And there's a lot of um, think tanks and startup um, organizations that, you know, that we deal with on a fairly regular basis. So, uh, so I use them as the example. And in this case, um, our startup came up with um, what turns out to be the greatest recipe for um, shaving cream you know, for anyone, uh, it is, that's never been made. It's just remarkable. I mean, it, it, it just, it, it actually cures imperfections in your face, say, um, you know, and we have sought a patent, you know, and trademarked the, you know, the issue, 
Um, but we're waiting in the lobby of, of um, Gillette World's headquarters. And, you know, we're in a few seats around a round, t- around coffee table. And we can clearly see in the, in the um, conference room that the other folks that are competing with us, the other startup that also has a remarkable product and, you know, and they too have, you know, have, um, have sought patents on it. So they're, you know, they are, they are um, equivalent in some respects, but they're different recipes uh, in the long run. Um, so we're sitting at there. We study, we're sitting there, and we see the other startup team doing a presentation, a, you know, providing their pitch, so to speak. That Gillette should buy their their um, technology, buy them uh, uh, out. Now, I'll give you one other piece for context, and that is that that, that Gillette's only going to select one. They're not going to they're not going to buy you know, both of you. So, as you're sitting there around the table, you look at the. Um, uh, the coffee table. the 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 CEO looks down. He's a non lawyer, and there's a there's a folder on the on the on the table that says, you know, um, secret recipe for you know Team B, right? The other company. And it turns out that they were sitting in the same seats just a little while before their you know presentation and before they were called in. And somebody left a folder with um, with you know their proprietary information in it. And it and it's very you know it's Somewhat ambiguous from the outside, but once you open it up and see it, right? But once the person opens up and sees it, they know, you know, they know what it is. So you either have to close it and put it down, or you know, or you have to put it in your briefcase. I mean, you know, and what is, you know, from a business ethics standpoint, um, it's very, very unclear, right? If you know, if if my CEO picks up the folder, it's very, very um, unclear whether or not it would be. Um, a violative of business ethics. I mean, because let's face it, you know, in business, I mean, business is, is, has always been described as a jungle. Um, and, you know, and you have to keep in mind that those business ethics are just not, you know, they're, they're, they're different for everybody. And again, they're coming from the top down. So CEO says to everybody at the, at the table, you're not going to believe this. Folks, we have, you know, we have the, the golden key right here, the golden ticket. And, you know, and, you know, what should we do? Right? Well, if there's four or five of you and, you know, and, and only you are the general counsel and only you are the attorney, um, you're going to have potentially a very different answer than, you know, than, uh, uh, than your, your colleagues. And I think that that's very, very important to keep in mind. Right? So there's a situation which you have to say, hey, look, as a lawyer, um, I'm, you know, and it may not be that it's unethical for you to look at it as a lawyer too, but you better stop and ask the question of yourself and figure it out. And the reason is, is because if it is unethical, um, you're going to pay a price for it almost certainly. Um, and, th- and the price is not going to be, you know, one that, that's um, uh, well received. So it, so keep those types of things in in mind because that's the that's where the real difference in the pressure of, of um, business and, le- and legal ethics uh, come together and they come together in so many different areas too. That's just one example, right? A, a vivid example of what happens, uh, you know, from a, from a pitch standpoint. Um, I don't know what my, what I, I don't know what my answer would be under those circumstances, um, you know, to the CEO, like, what can, what can we do with this or what should we do with this? Um, I, I, I believe, I mean, at least from, from my ethical um, standards and background, I believe that it would be, um, personally unethical, um, for me to participate in, you know, in, in any kind of, um, even accidental, um, uh, corporate espionage. I just wouldn't want to take the chance. I mean, so at the outset, I don't say, I mean, I just say, look, you know, I, I don't have an opinion on this at the moment and I want to make sure that everybody understands. Remember that people, you know, if you don't say it, and, you know, then people aren't going to, you know, they're not going to recall that, oh, yeah, you know, um, Jenny or Tom, you know, brought that up, you know, immediately that there's, that these are, that there's legal ethics that are involved here that they can't participate with. Um, so those are the types of challenges that you see, and you see them across industries. You see, you can see them in small practices, the mom and pop pizza shop, um, you know, where, where we are in Boston, you know, it is, there's a, there's pretty much a, a pizza um, stand on every corner and, you know, on every block. Um, and I suppose that's the case for many, um, urban areas. Um, but 
keep in mind, if you're giving advice to, you know, to the mom and pop pizza shop, um, you have to make sure that it's understood and you have to take into consideration certain things like the ability for people to, you know, to, to, to be fluent in English. So take, you got to take into consideration, you know, so they're understanding, you know, do they understand what I'm saying? Can they understand what I'm saying? Am I saying it in terms that are understandable by, by this particular person who belongs um, to this particular audience? So that, that's a very, very important, um, you know, issue to, to, to be aware of too. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did enjoy it, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more law practice and legal marketing videos. See you in our next clip.